Good morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord, of all the glory, all the praise, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Glory to God. Good morning, good morning. Every hour, I need thee. Glory to God this morning. I pray you all rested well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you, Almighty God. You are worthy to be praised. Magnificent and holy, you are, O oh God. On this wonderful Tuesday morning, fourth watch prayer. Amen. Power, prayer, and teaching. God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to to enter into your presence, to come into your throne room, to send forth our petitions and our supplications, hallelujah, our cries and our utterances for your help, for your help, for your understanding, for your peace, oh God, your peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards our heart and our mind in you. Thank you this morning for your peace. Thank you for your triumphant entry. Thank you, God, for coming, hallelujah, to save our souls. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you that you sit high and you look low. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Daddy God, for your son, Jesus, for our Savior, Jesus. Thank you that you looked for one and could not find one. And Jesus said, I'll go. Thank you, God, for searching. Hallelujah. The song says we searched all over and couldn't find no one. Hallelujah. You searched and couldn't find anybody. And Jesus said, I'll go. Hallelujah. He submitted to the plan for his life, God. We thank you. We thank you for teaching us this morning how to submit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister McCoy. How you doing? Hallelujah. We thank you and we bless your name this morning. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for the opportunity to call upon your name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being our Father. Thank you for allowing us to choose you to be our God. Thank you, God. For hi, Thank you for being our judge. Hallelujah. Thank you that when the accuser comes, accusing us of things sometimes we really did do. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Smith. Hallelujah. The things we really did do. You say not so. Hallelujah. You ask Jesus, what's the verdict? He says the blood. God, we thank you for the blood this morning that covers our sins, God. We a multitude, the love of God, a multitude that covers the multitude of our sins. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness this morning. Your forgiveness this morning, God, for things we've done, things we've said, God, sins of omission, hallelujah, sins of commission, God, sins that we plotted and planned to do. Good God Almighty, I'm going to tell her when I see her, oh, wait till I see him. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, we thank you, God, for the sins that we plotted and planned and rehearsed, hallelujah, and you forgave us anyhow. Good morning, Apostle. Bless your name. Good morning, Sister Tracy. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your forgiveness this morning. We thank you for your loving kindness this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for our advocate, Jesus, our intercessor. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, for the great intercessor, Jesus. We thank you for our defense attorney, Jesus. We thank you, God. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are holy. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You lead us, oh God, and you guide us, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. That leads us into all truth. We thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit this morning. Hallelujah, God, that you choose to dwell in us. Oh God, oh wretched people we are. Hallelujah. I'll speak for myself, oh wretched woman that I am if it wasn't for the blood. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Where, 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 where? Jesus, where? Where would I be? Where would we be, God? We thank you for Jesus this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you for the blood, God. We thank you, God, for Resurrection Sunday. You got up, oh God. Hallelujah. And you showed yourself to be alive. And every day you show yourself to be alive to us, oh God. Hallelujah, God. And we thank you. We won't have a rock cry out. Hallelujah. We won't have an ass speak for us. Hallelujah. We don't need a, a axe head, a, 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 the, the, the head of an of a axe to swim. Glory to God. Oh, God, we'll cry out. We thank you that the birds chirp and the wind blows and the leaves move, oh, God. But we thank you for the breath, your ruach that is within us, oh, God. We thank you for the power, the power of you. That is within us, God. Someone needs an answer this morning. Someone's trying to give up this morning. God, but I know you sent me with this word. It's too late to give up. You can't turn back. You can't turn back. You put your hand to the plow. You got to keep moving forward. Hallelujah. You got to keep looking forward. Hallelujah. So that your line is straight. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus, be the lamp unto someone's feet and the light unto someone's pathway this morning. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning, Lynette. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for being the lamp unto our feet. Thank you for being the lamp, the light unto our path. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you this morning, Daddy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. We look for the overflow this morning. Hallelujah. I encourage you. I encourage you this morning. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a loving God. He's a wonderful God. He's a keeping God. Good morning, angel. Hallelujah. He loves you. Hallelujah. More than you love yourself. I know you think your mother loved you the best or that man loved you, but nobody can love you like Jesus. Good God Almighty. Good morning, Sister Evangelist Welcher. Hallelujah. Nobody can love you like Jesus. Nobody can love you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was a part of your creation. Nobody can love you like Jesus. No one can encourage you like his word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Fill us up this morning till we overflow, oh God. Yes, God, we do. We want to run over in you, oh God. Be the answer to somebody this morning. We thank you for being the answer. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Hallelujah, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Now, I have several, 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 several translations here because I absolutely want us to get this word this morning. It's too late for you to give up. You are the answer. You are the way, God. You are the truth, God. The answer is in you. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord came upon Ariaza, son of Obed. Now, this is not Obed-Edom. This is not that Obed. This is a different Obed. And he met Asa and told him, listen to me, Asa, all of Judah and Benjamin. Now, we know that Asa was a king in Judah. Okay. And, um, you know, Judah had been clowning. Good God Almighty, with all their idols and worshiping other stuff, they have been clowning. So the prophet, the prophet came to him and said, the Lord is with you. Listen, this is the, this is the caveat. 
when you are loyal to him. One translation says when you're with him, he's with you. Good God Almighty. Another translation says when you stick with him, he sticks with you. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. That's already good. That's already good. When you stick with him, he sticks with you. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you. Part of the reason he was with King Asa was because King God knew that King Asa had a heart to do the right thing. He was amongst people who didn't want to do the right thing. Okay, so here we go. You at work and people don't want to do the right thing. You got family members who don't want to do the right thing. You want to bring your tithe into the storehouse and your spouse is saying no. Why we got to do all that? Just give them this. And you like, no, nah, baby. We Our tenth is, you know... $400 a month. Well, we're going to give three. And so you've done three for the last 16 years. And your income then went up, up, and up. And you're saying, honey, we got holes in our pockets. We trying to buy a house. We trying to get ahead. What, what's, where's the leak? Where's the, where's the open door? Where's the crack? And they not seeing it. Okay, so you got family members that every time they come to your house for a dinner or a, 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 a gathering of family, they want to bring weed. They want to bring liquor. And you like, no, we're not doing that in my house. And so you're kind enough to say at least go outside. But but that's your property. That's your property line. And everything on your property line, you saying, going to be holy. Not just everything in your house going to be right. Hallelujah. But everything that God has given me dominion and authority over. The front, the back, the left, the right, north, south, east, and west. So you're amongst people who don't want to do right. And you're constantly fighting that battle. Let alone the, the, the battle that's within me. The stuff that's within us that we got to contend with every day, that we got to die to every day. Good God Almighty. So you're amongst, you're amongst people that won't, don't want to do that. But, but the prophet said, so I'm coming this morning in my ascension gift. As a prophet teacher telling you, the Lord said, the God said, when we stick with him, he sticks with us. When we don't give up on him, he ain't going to never give up on us. Good God almighty. Because he's able. Remember the song, don't give up on God because he won't. He won't give up on you because he's able. He's able, he's willing, and he can. It's too late. You can't throw in the towel. There's no turning back. Hallelujah. You got to keep moving forward. I will not give up. I must. I'm, I can. I will. I must. I can. I will. I must. Somebody tag somebody. Share. Invite somebody. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. I'm done. They just said I'm done. I'm done. They didn't walked out on their marriage. How, how they in the house? But they done. They're done. But God needs someone to be encouraged this morning. I can. I will. I must. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. This is Tuesday. Elder, prophetess, doc, whatever you want to call me. I will never tell a woman to stay in an abusive relationship. Sometimes you got to go get to safety. Get to safety. Get, get, get the building up that you need. Glory to God. Get the counsel and the therapy that you need. While, while that husband who, who is abusive goes and gets the help that he needs and y'all date. Y'all court from separate places. Oh, don't stay in a place where you're being abused. No, 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 no. But I'm done. I'm out. God said, don't give up. I haven't told you to lay down. I haven't told you to, to, to toss the surrender. I can. Yes, Sister Lynette. I will. Yes, and I must. Glory to God. I can. I will. I must. I must, I can, I will do what God has put me in this earth to do. You have an assignment. You have a purpose. Somebody's waiting on you. Oh, because, you know, you had this event and only 10 people came. I ain't doing it no more because maybe one God, no, that's not it. Maybe God wants to see your commitment. Maybe he wants to see your perseverance. Maybe people just stubborn. Yeah, you've prayed for the hearts of men to be turned because the heart belongs to the king, belongs to God, and he has the power to turn their hearts. But people are people. 
they going to do what they want to do. Don't you give up on God because God ain't going to give up on you. Glory to God. He will not. He, he does not have to repent for the gifts that he's put in your life. Glory to God that he's put on you. Now, we need to repent daily, good, several times a day. <laughs> Glory to God. He ain't taking it back because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He's not taking them back. But we have to repent. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah. So he says, 2 Chronicles chapter 15. He says, if you seek him, you'll find him. And he'll respond. If you seek him, ask, seek, and knock. Ain't nothing changed. I know people be like, well, it says this over in this scripture. and It says this over here. Nothing. The word don't change. The word don't change. We change. The word don't change. Jesus don't change. And neither does his Logos word. His, and nor does his, his word, his, the prophetic word of Jesus does not change. The written word. It don't change. This is what he goes on to say. Listen. Listen, this is what he said. Listen, Aza, listen to me. I'm trying to tell you something this morning. He said, you need to understand that I don't change. And so what, what I, I thought was interesting was that um, Aza's name means the strength of God. His name, his very name means the strength of God. His name also means healer. So the prophet, the prophet Obed's son had to come and tell the strength of God that God's going to be with you as long as you stay with God. Stay with God. God's going to stay with you. Listen, I don't care how holy you think you are. Listen, let me take these off so you can see my eyes. I don't care how many times you didn't prophesy, preach, teach. You pray morning, noon, and night. You're an awesome intercessor. You try to be good to everybody. When you miss it, you try to say, I'm sorry. Good God Almighty, will you please forgive me? We have all of these wonderful things that we do. You serve in the house of the Lord. You're an usher. You're, on, you're in the choir. You, you, you're, you're an intercessor. You serve the pastor. You serve the first lady. Hallelujah. You will rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. All of that. But Aza, whose name means healer, whose name means the strength of God, he knows the strength of God. He knows it. It's in him. It's who he is. It's every time somebody says his name, they're calling on the strength of God. But guess what? Sometimes you need the strength of God. You who are the strength of God, you who come in the name of the strength of God, who pray for everybody, who help everybody, who pick up everybody's bill at dinner, who go get groceries for this and take this person to the doctor's office and all of these wonderful things that you're doing. You come as a healer. An emotional healer. Hallelujah. You might have the gift of healing and you lay hands on the sick and they recover. You might have prophetic gifts that bring encouragement and strength. You come as the strength of God. Look at that. But sometimes you need strength. You need somebody to come and speak into your life and to encourage you. And you feel like you're on this journey all by yourself. So the prophet came. The prophet came and just reminded Azar, you stick with God, God's going to stick with you. You can't give up. You can't turn back. You can't, you can't lay it down. You can't be like Lot's wife and, and look back. You can't be like the children of Israel want manna and quail. God's trying to bring you out of the desert. God's trying to bring you out of tradition. Yeah, I said it. He's trying to bring you out of tradition. He's trying to bring you out of bondage. And you keep wanting to go back. Now, what's interesting is Aza here in this text in in Second uh, Chronicles chapter fifteen, he has actually just come out of Egypt. He has just had victory over the pursuit of the uh, Ethi of, of the Egyptians. He had just he had just gotten victory. Uh huh. And now he. You know, I, I want, I, yeah, okay, daddy. So, particularly those of you who have prophetic gifts, prophetic gifts, you may be a prophetic intercessor, which means you pray. 
and God speaks to you through prayer uh, with, with messages. Uh, you may have a prophetic prayer language that uh, needs interpretation. Um, you may have prophetic dreams. You may have the gift of prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. And so God wants you to understand something, particularly those of you who have prophetic gifts and the gift of faith. I think God wants me to say that. Miracle gifts, healing. A lot of times you will face feelings of loneliness. You will face, feel, you will have feelings of abandonment, rejection, feeling like you're alone. Nobody gets you. Nobody understands you. This is part of the reason why the body of Christ is important and being around people who are, who also have the same gifts as you so that they can stir them up. Amen. So that you can recognize you are not the only one out here. That don't mean that you and all the prophets going to be having tea and scrumpets. However, what it does mean is that you recognize that they too struggle with some of the things you struggle with. Part of the reason is because leaders too. Part of the reason is because. The gift on your life requires you to draw close to him quite often. Seek him. And you don't have time to go to everybody's picnic. You ain't got time to be at everybody's baby shower. Because God is speaking to you. And that doesn't mean you be weird, right? Don't be weird. Please don't be weird. You peculiar, but don't be weird. <laughs> Good God Almighty. And so, because you're coming to people, as the Lord releases you, as the Lord releases you to come to someone after you prayed and he says now and you go, a lot of times you will feel rejected because they're looking at you like, did nobody ask you to come tell me that? And why are you in my business? Now, of course, when you're coming with a wonderful word, woo, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody happy. Everybody happy. But when you come in with a word of correction, a word of rebuke, in love, I pray you come in love, because if you don't come in love, you're clanging symbols. Don't nobody want to hear you no way. But even when you come in love, you will still at times be rejected. And so you must be strengthened. The, the song says, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of one body. I pray for you. You pray for me. That's what the song says. And so we need that. But more so, I'm saying to you, those of you who walk in prophetic gifts that I pray you are being trained in, so you ain't bruising everybody and beating folk up like my pastor used to tell me. So it's a Tuesday, minister take prophetess. Everybody don't want to be snatched. He said, I had a snatch in ministry because I would come and snatch you up out of that stuff because I would see it and be like, the Lord said, come on up out of that. And so because I wasn't trained and equipped on how to use the gifts, I could have damaged some people. But God knew my heart. Amen. And I pray that they, learned, they knew my heart. But if not, this is what I know. What I came and told them came to pass. Get up out that man's bed. Leave that woman alone. Stop doing it. You ain't married. Good God Almighty. So the prophet comes, the prophet comes and tells Azar. So he tells him, listen, you stick with God, God's going to stick with you. You stay tight with God, God's going to stay tight with you. You keep seeking his face, God is going to answer. So he goes on to say in verse 3, for a long time, Israel had no God. They had no true God. They had these idols that they worshiped. And, and he says they didn't have a priest. And nor did they obey the law. Israel was stubborn. They wanted to do things their way. Your children, your teenagers, your 20-somethings. I got this, Ma. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so for a long time, you want to do your things your way. You want to be stubborn. You want to set your own laws. Good morning, Psalmist Crystal. You want to set your own laws and your own rules. You don't get to do that when you're a Christian. I'm sorry, you don't get to do that. But this is what we try to do. And so the prophet comes to him, to King Azar, and says, listen, for a long time, y'all didn't have a king. Y'all didn't have a priest. Hallelujah. And y'all didn't have anybody to teach y'all the law. But now the prophet is here. And I'm telling you that if you stick with God, God is going to stick with you. Why 
And I said earlier, God would come eat, and so so that we know the process of, of the Old Testament, right? The children of Israel was sin, was sin. He would they would sin, they would have a king, they would get a priest, and they would get a prophet. Good God. Then they would get it right for a minute, maybe. Then he would punish them again. They would get a king, their king. They would get have a priest. Priest was sinning. Remember, remember, uh, old boy's sons just sinning. The son sinning. The, the daddy ain't holding them accountable. Just everybody out of order. Then here comes the prophet with a word from the Lord. Now, what's interesting? Oh my God! Do you want me to say this now? Okay, I'm gonna hold on to this. Lord, please bring it back to my remembrance. So he says, because of their, because they were in trouble, even though it was their fault. It was their fault. It was their fault. God still sends the prophet to say because they were in distress. Because you are in distress. Because you are in trouble. You did that. You caused that. That was your decision. That was your decision Tuesday. God didn't tell you to date that man. He didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you that man was your husband. He said he could be. If you want him to be, he can be. So whatever you faced in that, thank you, Jesus, that I got out of it before I said I do. Good God Almighty. Yes, I said it. You, you, whoever is under the sound of my voice, you went and bought that car with the car note $400, $500 a month. And you know you're struggling. God didn't tell you, but you keep calling it a blessing. I was blessed with this car. No, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. God didn't tell you to get that car. God did not tell you to get that three, four, five thousand square foot home and you struggling to pay the house note. Your decision. Your decision. God did not tell you to leave your church and go over there to that church. And now you over there and you don't like nobody over there. Everybody over there a trip. Well, partly because you went. Because we all sick. We all need a hospital. Jesus. So wherever you go, you're going to take you. So until we get healed and whole, yeah, I said it. But until we get healed and whole, we're going to take us. God didn't tell you to go over there. God didn't tell you to leave your wife. God didn't tell you to leave your husband. God didn't tell you to do that. Will God tell you to step back? Will God tell you to leave in certain situations? I have a friend who was separated for years. Did not get a divorce. Until God said, get it. And when she got it, it went through just like that. Husband was a little salty because she went on through with it. But when God tells you to do it, even if the people around you are confused, even the people around you don't like it, when you obey God, when you do the right thing amongst everybody who ain't trying to do the right thing, like where Asa was, Asa was, God, will bless you. So he goes on to say, so God, because of the distress, they turn back to the Lord. They turn back because of the distress and because of the things they were going through, because of the trouble they were in, they turn to God. So that's what would happen. The children of Israel would get in, get in trouble. They would be distressed, things that they brought upon themselves. They would cry out to God. God would send the priest. God would send the prophet. Good God Almighty, this is what he did. This is what he's still doing. You cry out to God? Doesn't matter that it's your fault. It doesn't matter that you did it. He's going to answer you. He draws close to the brokenhearted. He draws close to those of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. That contrite spirit means somebody who's humble enough to say, Daddy, I did it. I did it. Raise your hand. I did it. I, I did that. God, I need your help. So let alone the stuff that you didn't bring on yourself, he going to come. Good God Almighty. He's going to come when you did it too. Hallelujah. I love you, God. When you come with a humble spirit, when you come truly with humility, righteous indignation, that you want a righteous indignation, not your indignation, but a righteous indignation, a Jesus indignation that says, I want to be right. I know I'm wrong, but I want to be right. And, and I, I, I have the can't help it. Give me strength. Help me to not do that, God. Help me to make better decisions, God. Help me to wait on you. Help me to not get ahead of you because the Bible says that God hates quick feet because they run into trouble. He hates quick feet. 
because they run into trouble. I always tell young people, you know why? See, if, 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 the, if they getting in fights at our local mall here in Indianapolis, one of the upper end malls, and they was doing it downtown at the downtown mall. I said, they gonna, they, I'm sorry, they gonna, I'm going to say it. They're going to keep y'all Negroes out of there. And then y'all going to be talking about it's discrimination. No, it ain't. Y'all raggedy. And y'all running into trouble. You knew that that fight was going to happen out at the mall. You know how I know you knew? Because good morning, uh, evangelist. Yvette, listen, you know how I knew? How I know? Because y'all on social media. And y'all talking. Y'all talking about the fight going to happen at the Castleton Mall. And so you trick your mama to take you to the mall with you and your little friend girls or you and your boys, drop you off the mall, and now all y'all videotaping the fight as it's going through the food court or running past Claire's and knocking stuff over or running past the kiosks and knocking stuff over. God hates quick feet because they run into trouble. Instead of you being one of the friends that say, man, I ain't rolling up out there. Because this might be the, the Saturday that we go out there to watch the fight. That they send the police and sweep all of us up. See, you my child and all y'all who got kids. Mm -hmm, you going to stay at the juvenile center. See, I hate that because they don't, they don't let you keep leave them there. But you would stay. But, but you know what I would do when, I, when you come home? Because, see, you running with people, Azi. The one who got strength. The one who got Jesus. Hallelujah. The one who could be an answer to your peers. You, I, I would take that cell phone. Let me see what you've been doing. Lord, don't let me find out you've been a part of the conversation. You would get beat down. Talk real. So the Bible says. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, he goes on to say, because of their distress and because they cried out to the Lord. Good morning, Brother Robert. Because they cried out to the Lord, he said he and everything that surrounded them was coming after them. They were in the middle of chaos. I hope y'all hearing me this morning. You're in the middle of chaos. Chaos in your home, chaos on your job, chaos in your family, chaos in your finances, might be chaos in your church, chaos in your fraternity, chaos in your sorority, chaos in your men's group, chaos in your women's group, chaos with your kids. You're in the middle of chaos. You got a report from the doctor. Your, your, your bank account is overdrawn. Just chaos. This is what the word of the Lord says. He said, in total chaos. Chaos was surrounding them on every side, every area of your life. This is where people say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Can I tell you, stop saying stuff like that. Watch your mouth. I'm going to do it. A Shut up. Stop saying stuff. Bring your stuff back on yourself. Oh, I'm up under. I'm up under the weather. I'm under the weather. Get on top of the weather. Jesus, go take some NyQuil. Take some vitamin C. Get your flu shot next year. You hear me? Stop saying stuff that you speak back on yourself. Good God Almighty. Somebody let me know you're listening. Some thumbs up, some hearts or something. Hallelujah. And so, surrounded by chaos, share with somebody, invite somebody, tag somebody. You know you got that friend that's always speaking negative. And guess what? Negative is always coming. And so, thank you, Sister Yvette. I love you so much. And so he says, um, he says, so constantly fighting one nation, fighting against the other, battling you in this battle, you in that battle, battling with your kids, battling with your spouse, battling with your mama, battling with your siblings, arguing with people at work, arguing with people at church. Everywhere you look, you're surrounded by chaos on every side. There's a battle. Somebody want to, well, you said this or you said that. We ain't 15. We ain't 12. We grown tail men and women. And you up in some he say, she say. Well, sister such and such said, first of all, don't call her sister such and such when you're getting ready to tell her business. Because I don't tell my sister's business. <laughs> Good God almighty. Yeah, yeah. So you're in the midst of all of this. And the Bible says in, in verse chapter, in chapter six, it says all of this fighting going around. And this is what God said. This is what the word says in chapter six, in verse six, chapter 15, second Chronicles. He says, God allowed it. I know, I know. God allowed it. 
God allowed it because of your sin, because of your struggle, because you didn't cry out. Until you cried out, he allowed it. Cry out, somebody. Help! Put that out there. Help, Lord. I tell people, honey, there's a four-letter word in the kingdom, and there's a two-letter word in the kingdom. The two-letter word is no, and the, the other anointed word is help. Lord, help me. You ain't even got to say, Lord. You ain't even got to say, Jesus. I tell people all the time, you ain't even got to say, no, thank you. Just say, no. No, I'm not going to do that. No. And you keep asking me, I'm going to go off on you, Jesus. No. Yeah. You need to cry out. That's what the Bible says. That until they cried out, God did not send their answer. You got to cry out to God. You know, how's that working? How How is it you, what you trying to do? How How's that working for you? You trying to fix it. How's that working? And you trying to fix it and getting yourself deeper and deeper and deeper in debt. In debt to someone else. In debt to yourself. In debt financial. In debt emotional. Because you trying to fix it. You trying to fix it. It don't work like that. You got to cry out. You need help. You need help. Just cry out, God help me. Help, Lord. Lord, help. However you say it, just help. Hallelujah. Jesus. Good God Almighty. That's another word. That's another word. Good God Almighty. The blood. That's another word. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I just say the blood is one word. It's just one word. I know it's two, the blood. But it's just one word. The blood. Good God Almighty. You got to cry out. Hallelujah. said if you cry out, he'll draw near. And this is why he said, if you stick with God, he's going to stick with you. You draw close to God, he's going to draw close to you. You don't give up on God, he's never going to give up on you. So keep crying out. Don't let nobody tell you you didn't pray about that enough. That, that, yeah, yeah, that, uh, uh huh. You, you, why you keep praying? Why you keep asking God? Because he's my God, he's my daddy, and I can keep asking until I get an answer. You don't get to tell me how many times I talk to God about stuff. I'm going to talk to him about it until he answers. Because that's the kind of God we serve. So, the Bible says, he says, he says, because God caused the turmoil. God, God caused it. He didn't just allow it. The scripture says right here. God caused it. He said, he said, God, because of their sin, because they were constantly up to something. <laughs> that's what the message Bible said. Because they were constantly up up to something, constantly plotting, constantly scheming to come against this person, to come against that person. Oh, this is a word for your enemies too. This is a word for your haters too. Because they're constantly up to something against you, God gonna get them. God gonna let some stuff happen. Now, the, 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 the challenge we have here is when your enemy, let me take these off so you can see my eyes. The challenge is when the enemy, your hater, is in the house of God. When they're a Christian too. You know, y'all pray for me because words mean, words are important to me and they should be important to everybody, to you. But Christians are people who have confessed Christ as, Je Jesus, as Savior and Lord, right? But I believe that there is something called, the scripture calls, a believer. Because those who are believers obey God. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. And I contend, I contend, this is Tuesday, that a lot of what we deal with in the church are Christians who have not become believers. They believed unto salvation to get saved so that their name could be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So they believed. To get saved. But they do not believe God for all of his word. So you are not walking as a believer. To be in the kingdom, you have to be a believer. You got to believe the word. And the word is Jesus. You must. You must believe. You got to believe. And you got to walk. As a believer. So a lot of times what we are contending with in the church are Christians. 
we all, you know, the religious side of being in Christ, right? So we, we gotta we 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 come to church because we gotta go to church. We pray because we supposed to pray. We no 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 no. We do these things. We do these things because we have confessed and we believe. So you confessed, but did you believe? Have you been converted? Are you in the sanctification process? This is the beauty. This is the beauty of being in Christ. This is the beauty. Because you are saved. You got saved. You are being saved and you shall be saved. Most of us are in the being saved process, the sanctification process. We got salvation when we confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Now we are being sanctified, becoming more and more like Christ prayerfully, daily. And then we will be glorified where we shall be saved in our perfect state. You got to believe to be a believer. Y'all know I got to pull out my, my my old faithful girl right here. You got to believe, oh Lord Jesus, help y'all. You got to believe all of this. You got to believe all of this. You don't get to pick and choose. You got to believe the corrected word. You got to believe the blessed word. You got to believe the promises. You got to believe it. You got to believe the part that says if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. We got to believe this. Does that mean we're going to get it all together in one fell swoop? Absolutely not. That's why you are being sanctified. That's why you are being saved. But you got to believe in the process. Good God Almighty. You got to believe the word. Got to believe the word. And the word is Jesus. I just got, I keep coming back to that. Because we forget the word is Jesus. The word is Jesus. So every time you speak the word, you call it on the name of Jesus. Y'all better cry out. Ha! Huh? Cry out! Hallelujah. So he said, he said, but as for you, Azai, he said, as for you, Azai, he said, be strong, be courageous, and your work will be rewarded. He said, but as for you, Azai, he said, take heart, be strong. Your payday is coming. I'm here to tell somebody, don't give up on God. Because he's not going to give up on you. Don't give up. It's too late, baby, now. It's too late. Though we really did try to fake it. Something inside is dying. That's what the song says. And I just can't take it. But we got a living God in us. We got a living God in us that we don't have to give up. It is never too late. You're not too old. You're not too young. You're not too tall. You're not too short. You're not too dark. You're not too light. You're not too educated. You're not too uneducated. Good God Almighty, don't give up. Don't turn back. Good God, keep moving ahead. Hallelujah. Putting your hand to the plow. Keeping your line straight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be like that horse with them blinders on. Hallelujah, that they not looking to the right or to the left. They're looking ahead. They're pressing towards the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he said, but it's different for you. You, Azar, whose name means the strength of God, whose name means healer. Good God, it's different for you, Yvette. It's different for you, Crystal. It's different for you, Sister Barnett. It's different. It's different for you, Lynette. It's different for you, Blanche. It's different for you, Tracy. It's different. It's different for you. It's different for you. It's different for you. He said, as for you, don't you give up. He said, as for you, don't you give up. He said, he said, be strong. Take heart. He said, your payday is coming. He said, your payday is coming. Don't you give up. That's right, Tracy. Stay the course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we on a cruise, we don't really know what direction that big old ship is moving. Hallelujah. When I was on that cruise and, and, and those hurricanes was coming. Hallelujah. And, and, and we were supposed to go into that direction of the hurricane. But you could see slightly how that, that big old cruise.
battleship was turning and taking us in another direction. You couldn't feel the turn. But if you went out on the deck, like, like, because I got my little, my mommy a little, you know, little, the little deck thing off the bedroom. So we could go and you could look off the side and you could see how it was turning. Sometimes you don't see it turning. You don't see it turning in your favor. It don't feel like it's turning in your favor, but it's turning. Don't you give up on God. You stick with God and God's going to stick with you. Don't you turn back. Don't you give up. Don't you let nobody tell you it's too late. No, it's not. God can heal your child. God can heal you. God can heal your marriage. Hallelujah. I know two people in it and one of them stubborn. One of them don't want to forgive, but God can do it. God can make that father do right by his kids. He didn't want on about his business. Can make them do right. God can reconcile your relationship with your mother. You a grown tail woman, but you need to be reconciled with your mother. He can let you reconcile with a father, a sibling. Yes, he can. He said, don't you give up on him. He said, something's different. It's different for you. It's different for you. He said, it's different. He said, be strong, be courageous. Don't you lose your courage. He said, don't you stop doing the work that I've sent you to do because your work is going to be rewarded. He said, God remembers your labor of love. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. There is a due season if you do not faint. God knows you're going to get tired. God knows you're going to want to give up. God knows that you're going to sit down sometimes, to, but he wants you to sit down and get back up and get back to it. Hallelujah. This is what he wants. This is his will for your life. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you turn back. It's too late. It's too late. Somebody say it's too late. It's too late. I got I to gotta finish this course. I can't be in the middle of the, middle of the swim. I got to get to shore. Hallelujah. Give me strength, God, in the middle of this journey. Strengthen me, God, till I see the end of it. Good God Almighty. Strengthen me, Lord. Your strength. He says, listen. God is not tripping on you getting tired. He just don't want you to give up. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, he does. He, yeah, yeah, we know the scripture. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to do you no harm. Plans to give you a hope in the future. But this is another scripture I want you to hear. The Lord said, as I was preparing for this in 2 Chronicles 15, I start saying, Lord, don't give up. How do I help the people to not give up. He said, always know that I'm with you and I will provide your strength. I will provide your strength. I will breathe new life into them. I'll send someone to encourage you. I'll send someone out of nowhere to say, hey, I was just praying for you. I was just thinking about you. God's with you. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late, Tracy. It's too late, Yvette. It's too late. You got to finish the course. I ain't going to be nice to them no more. Okay, you ain't got to be no punk. You ain't got to let nobody run over you, right? Don't do that. Ha! But you can show the love of God and keep it moving. And keep it moving. That's what I said. The word of the Lord says, Galatians chapter 6, don't grow weary in your well-doing. But this is where I wanted to go. Joshua chapter 1 says, God has promised to be with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. He's promised to be with you. He told Joshua, I'll be with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. So you call on God. Okay, I'm here and I'm in the middle of this chaos. Yep, I caused it. I'm in the middle of this drama. Yep, I caused it. I was a part of it. Hallelujah. I'm in the middle of this battle. Yep, yep. I chose to marry him. I chose to marry her. I chose to be in that relationship. I chose to have children with them. I chose to do this. It was my choice. I did it. But God, I need you. I need you. And you promised me. See, this is the thing. You guys got to, we got to, we, I'm going to say we, we have to put the word on everything. Yeah, keep it moving. Show love. Keep it moving. Listen, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put the word on everything. You gotta put Jesus on everything. I remember a prophet, a prophet, apostle, I can't remember her name. She came to Healing Streams years ago. And that lady, she wore me out. Okay, she just, she knocked me down, God Almighty, to the point that I literally had to crawl to get up. 
and, and I don't know if any of you guys who are on, I don't know, if, I don't know if Crystal, if you were there, but I know Yvette wasn't. And I had to crawl. I had to crawl to the point that I almost crawled to the back. <laughs> Jesus, to underneath the curtain of uh, that covered the pulpit. But this is what she said. She said, I, I didn't hear her, but I got the recording later. She said, this woman, talking about me, she said, she got a crazy faith. She got crazy faith, and she ain't scared of the devil. She said, that's why he keeps trying to mess with her, but he'll ne he's not going to get victory over her. And she said, and she loves the word. This woman didn't know me. She said, and she loves the word. She said, she put the word on everything. Y'all get sick of her. I'm on the floor underneath, hello, the altar. I mean, literally, underneath the curtain that covered the stage, my, my half my body, because that's where I had to crawl, because the word was just, it, it was wearing me out. And, and she said, she said, she, she puts the word on everything, and she don't, she don't do mess. Because she going to give y'all the word. I say all that to say, put the word on it. Put God, God said, God said, put me in remembrance of my word. Put him in remembrance. God, you said you would be with me everywhere that I go. You said that if I put my trust in you, I would not be put to shame. God, you said you would never leave me and you'll never forsake me. And I don't say it like you're mad. I ain't mad. I'm just passionate. <laughs> I know you love me. You promised never to leave me and never forsake me. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, you got to put the word on it. You said uh, healing is the children's bread. That's what you said. You said children are the fruit of the woman, the inheritors of the earth, Blanche. Your children are that. They're the fruit of your womb. And your fruit is good. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, good God Almighty, or his seed begging for bread. You in lack, you in seed. You're the righteousness of God? Why you in lack? God, you said I ain't going to have to beg for bread. I shouldn't have to be asking nobody for gas money. Come on. You got to put the word on it. Because it is the word that will not return void. That's why I love people. Thank you. Thank you. And people, can I pray for you? Yeah, are you going to pray the word? Because don't be praying your emotions. Don't be praying your opinions. Pray the word. And if all you got in you is three scriptures, pray it. If you don't, if, if you need to open up this boy and pray something, open it up and pray. Psalms is always good. Just go there. Pray something over there. It's going to hit every time. Good God Almighty. It's going to hit every time. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Because with man, you got to remember. You got to remember. With, with, with man, stuff can be impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible with God. God, now I'm with you because I'm sticking with you. You sticking with me. You my dude. You my daddy. Right? You my God. You my father. Jesus, you my brother. I'm sticking with you. I'm a joint heir. I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir of Christ. So I'm putting the word on it, right? So put the word on it. So with man, nothing's impossible. Everything's impossible. But with you, with you, nothing is impossible. Now I need you to get this. I'm giving y'all all my secrets this morning. Listen, I am. Nothing is impossible. I am. Everything is in the I am. Everything is in the I am. I am possible. I'm possible. Everything is possible with God. He is the great I am, right? Did we forget that? So everything is possible with God. Nothing, 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 nothing is impossible. Stick with God. He's going to stick with you. Nothing. Don't give up on him. He's never going to give up on you. You don't turn from him. Because we don't, God don't turn from us, we turn from him. He is the I am. I'm possible. I'm possible. And because I am is in you, I am is in me, nothing's impossible. Do you follow what I'm saying? I am possible. I am. I'm possible. I'm Tuesday, Yvette, Q, Tracy, Crystal, Michelle, hallelujah, Blanche, all those who are in the sound of my voice and will come back and listen to this, you're possible. It's impossible for you to be defeated by the enemy. We, 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 we defeat ourselves long before with our doubt and our unbelief. Long before the devil can get to you. He work on you to, to, to put your hands against yourself. Good God Almighty. So, so, so he says, he says in his word, he says in his word in Mark chapter 11. Here's another good one. He says, come to me. We know the scripture. All the all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, and uh, he said, and by the way, Jesus, that mm -mm, you don't get no victory. 
So, God this morning wants you to be encouraged. So, what did, what did King Asa do after God told him, for you it's going to be different. For you it's going to be different. For you, I am going to come to your aid. And I'm going to bring your reward. Your reward is on the way. Your reward is on the way. Good God Almighty. I know. I was too, Sister Welcher, yesterday when God gave me this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your prayer, Sister Yvette. He said, it's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you, Sister Welcher. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you, Blanche. It's going to be different for you, Virginia. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. He said, for you who has cried out to me, who has drawn close to me, who stuck with me, he said, your reward is on the way. He said, all this chaos has been around you, all these battles, you've been in the middle of this and in the middle of that and, and, and out here feeling like you by yourself. He said, he told King Azar, whose name means the strength of the Lord. And even though you strengthen everybody else, you come alongside of everybody else, your kids, your mama, your siblings, you they other Holy Spirit. But God says, I'm going to strengthen you because I'm going to bring your reward. I'm going to bring your answer. So don't grow weary in your well-doing. There is a due season if you faint not. He told us. He told us that our reward comes because of our faith. It's going to be different for me. It's going to be different. Your marriage will not end. All of them people around you and your family that, that seems to be a generational curse, seems to be a, a generational habit, everybody want to be divorced, we say not so. Not so. Not for you. Not for you. Yours will last. This, this next one, this next one, you're going to see it till the finish, till death do us part, not because you killed each other, good God Almighty, but because you grew old together. The next one is going to be right. Your reward is on the way. Your reward is on the way. Good God Almighty. That next thing, this time, you'll get the loan. You're going to get the loan because you cried out. You said, Lord, I wasted money. I might have bought that house that you told me not to buy. I, I bought that car that you told me not to buy. I entered into that relationship that you didn't tell me to enter into. But this time, because I waited on you, because I cried out to you, you've come. And you've come with my answer and you're going to come with my reward because that's what your word says. It's going to be different for me. It's going to be different for me. Because God knew Azar's heart. He knew that Azar wanted to do right. Despite the fact that everybody around him did not. So the Bible says that Azar took down every idol. That did not give God glory. I'm going to challenge you today. Remove everything from your life that don't give him glory. I know he's fine. I know he's fine. I know he stretched 42 wide, salt and pepper gray. He cut it, he rippled, and he put his hand on the back of your head just right, and he kissed you on your neck and your forehead and all that, and he tell you he love you, he ain't your husband, though. And if it's not bringing God glory because you're constantly being compromised to do things that you know you shouldn't do. I remember a young man who worked for a liquor company, like Jack Daniels or something, and he was a distributor to different restaurants. And this was years ago. He came to me and he said, Minister Tate, I just, I, I feel like I don't want to do this anymore. I feel like I'm, I don't want to sell liquor. I don't want to sell liquor. I don't even drink, but I work for a liquor company. And I am one of their highest salesmen in this region. Whatever it, His region may have been Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, wherever it was. And I said, you ask God to open, because he was married, he had children. I said, if God's not telling you to leave it and just drop it, because you want to provide for your family. You ask God to open the right door. And God will open the door. And you will be able to walk out of that job. And not miss a beat. I hope you're hearing me today. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different. It's going to be different for me. It's going to be different. Some of you are quote unquote trailblazers. I say quote unquote only because. You're, you're, you, you might be kind of like the John the Baptist. Kind of. Kind of weird, right? In your family. Not, I won't say weird. Set apart in your family. They don't get you. Not because you're trying to be weird. Or you're trying to be so holy and sanctimonious. You try to have fun. You try to engage. But you're different. You're different. Because the call and the purpose on your life requires that you be different. 
And because of that, there are things that you do that other people don't do. You forgive. My mother told me one time, she said, you, she said, I don't know if I could forgive like you. You, you seem like you just forgive people. You're just like, okay. And I said, but mommy, I cry a lot before I get to forgiveness. I cry a lot. It looks quick to you because in my private time, I'm crying. Lord, help me. Help me to forgive them. Help me to forgive her. So I can move on. So I have no hindrances between me and God and me and people. Because at any moment, you could send me with a word for them. You could give me a word for them. And because I got issues, I don't want to pray. I'm going to be transparent. I, I had to leave uh, early Sunday to meet a friend from church. To meet a friend who was from out of town. So I had to leave church early. And communion, we were take, going to take communion at the end of service, and I sat there. And Crystal, this is going to be funny because Crystal and I sit next to each other at church. And I said, I don't really have people, I definitely don't have anybody that I hate. But I sat in church Sunday and I said, I'm offended by what that person did. And I'm not going to take communion. But I had to leave anyway, so I didn't have to take it. But I will periodically take communion here at home because I have the supplies. But I know I got to go and talk to that person because I, they may not even realize what they did or they certainly, I don't believe, I know it wasn't intentional, but I know that they don't understand how it, that it offended me. It hurt me. And so I need to go make it right with them. Before I bring his bread and his, his body and his blood into my body that brings healing and that restores me. You got to make it right. You got to apply all the word. We don't get to pick and choose. But you put the word on it. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you. Say that. It's going to be different for me. God is going to reward me for my good work. God is going to reward me because he knows my heart. And it may look like now ain't the time for you to be rewarded because you're still in the middle of some struggles. But because you're crying out to God, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to treat people that way. I don't want to struggle with that. God, help me. He's still going to come. So don't grow weary in your crying out. Don't grow weary in your doing well. There is a due season because you are not going to faint. God, I thank you for these, your people. And I ask that you bless them and bless them indeed. I ask that you enlarge their territory. God, I pray that the blessings of the Lord that will come upon their lives will make them rich and will add no sorrow. God, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. It's going to be different. It's going to be different for them. You are going to come with their reward because they were humble enough to say, God, I participated in that. But God, I want to be right for you. Help, Lord. Daddy, we thank you. Victory. Victory belongs to you. And because victory belongs to you, victory belongs to me. Because the I am is in me. And with you, God, nothing is impossible. With you, all things are possible. I bless God for you this morning. Thank you so much. I pray that something in you was activated, imparted, and released to go forth in Christ. To go forth and do what God has put you in the earth to do. Gentle reminder. Women who are under the sound of my voice. You are welcome at the Father for Men's Conference on April the 7th at 2 o'clock. If you have a male, M-A-L-E, hurt. And you have not been able to seem to, to make it over that hump. To get to a place of healing and wholeness. But you just need to seal that thing. There will be a restoration reconciliation ceremony at that time uh, after Bishop Sapp finishes ministering on that day. If you have a son, a brother, a son, a teenage son, a millennial son, a brother, a husband, like Sister Yvette was like, I'm going to sow into my brother and I'm going to send my help my brother to go. Amen. For a sister who loves her brother and knows that he just needs a little bit of something. It is men only register them. I've had several wives register their husbands and said, baby, I think you need to go to this. I think you need to be around other men. 
I believe if listen to me. I okay. I just heard the Lord say this. I heard, oh my God. He said, because I gave the vision to a woman, it's going to take other women to help her birth it. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, thank you for my Elizabeths this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the midwives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Not to usurp, not to tell their husbands what to do, not to tell their brothers or their boyfriends what to do, God. Not to be a mother to grown men, but thank you for midwives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you know you need your men in your life healed. Your brothers, your nephews, your cousins, your daddy. Good God Almighty. You know you need them healed. Hey, God. You know you want them whole. You know what they're lacking. Because you saw it and you see it and God has given it to you. Oh, God, it ain't Mother Winter. It ain't intuition. It's the Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Hey, God, register them. Hey, God. God, register them. Just find a man and say, I want to sow this conference into you. Bishop Sapp is going to just sit down and talk with the men and allow the men to talk and to share and to ask questions. This is what we need. Hey, God. You got a brother, you got a nephew, you got a son. Sow it into them. I'm telling you. I hear what the Lord is saying. This is so he ain't said this till today. It's going to be because he birthed it in a woman. It's going to take women to push it out and be midwives. Good God Almighty. I know, I know, I know that I know that I know that this is what God has called for such a time as this. Good morning, Sister Alicia. Hallelujah. It's going to be different for us. Hey, because we cried out for our husbands. We cried out for our brothers. We cried out for our sons. We cried out for our nephews. We cried out for our fathers. We cried out. And God's going to answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Inbox me, Tracy. I, I don't know. I don't know, but we, we can figure it out. Hallelujah. We are believing God. My expansive goal, because I can be extreme in my faith, right? Was 200 men. Is 200 men. But the, the conference goal is 100 men. And we're about 50 men away. That's nothing. That's nothing. With the lineup that we have of facilitators and bringing Bishop Marvin L. Sapp here. And oh my God, it's going to be amazing. I know that I know that I know the intercessors are praying. The team is praying. God is going to do it. It's going to be different. Not like anything else that any man has gone to. I'm telling you, I know that I, I've had men tell me that they know this is not like anything they have ever seen. In Indianapolis or anywhere. I keep telling people. The one of the manpower speakers is coming to Indianapolis. You ain't even got to wait. Go to Dallas. Go to Dallas to manpower. But one of the manpower speakers is coming to Indy to speak into only men's life. He ain't coming to an anniversary. He's not coming to just preach at a church, at a revival. He's coming specifically to deal with men, to stir up the power of God. It is here in Indianapolis at 6321 La Paz Trail at Westside Church. Women, again, are welcomed at 2 o'clock. But I'm encouraging you women, be midwives. Help me to birth this vision. Send your sons, your husbands. Cry out for them, your brothers, your nephews, teens and above. Eighth grade and above. And if they're a mature seventh grader, send them.
send them. I love you this morning. We're fasting and praying today, team, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hallelujah. I love God. I love him. He's a promise keeper, so he said I put my trust in him. He will not let me be put to shame. 100 strong. April the 7th. Doors open at 7.30. Women, 2 o'clock. Men, be there. Get your men there. Get your sons there. And uh, I'll post the link in this thread. But you can go to my page and you can find it anywhere. It's on Eventbrite as well. It's in um, Hallelujah. Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Um, it's also on Facebook as an event. So God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm sorry we went over time. All right. I will see you. The Lord says the same. I'll see you next Tuesday. Now, I will be... On vacation I'm going away for a week I think it's about time um, so there's a time change I got to make sure um, there's a time change I'm not sure how many hours <laughs> it is but um, I will post uh, if there's anything different about me showing up with you guys from my remote location amen God bless you I love you with the love of the Lord have a great Tuesday